Hello friends, welcome back to Dr. Jackie's Academy. In today's video, I will discuss about the diseases affecting the liver. So, I will start the liver diseases with the uh, viral hepatitis. So, let's start. So, in this video, I will discuss about the hepatitis because of, uh, of the viral type that is viral hepatitis A along with viral hepatitis E. I will discuss A and E because there is a lot of similarity between these two. Otherwise, I should have discussed B and C. But I will discuss B and C because their, their pathogenesis is different. So, similarity between A and E. That is why I have taken these two together. So, now coming down to what we mean by this word hepatitis. As you indicate, as the name indicates, itis indicates inflammation. Hepa means liver. So, inflammation of the liver is called as hepatitis. <coughs> so, coming down to etiology, reason why this kind of hepatitis can take place, number of reasons are there. It can be the viruses, alcohol consumption, toxins, drugs or autoimmune reactions. So, there are number of reasons for the hepatitis. But, we are considering the viral infection as a source or an etiology to cause the hepatitis. So, viral hepatitis, uh, because it is one of the most prevalent form of the hepatitis, and it, uh, this is, there is not a single virus. There are a number of viruses which can produce the hepatitis, like hepatitis A, B, C, D, and E. In today's lecture, we will discuss A and E. So, coming down to hepatitis A, so first of all, I will discuss about the, the nature of the hepatitis A virus. So it is very small in size. All the viruses are very small. It is also very small. And it is non-enveloped. Non-enveloped mean envelope is absent. No envelope. And outer envelope is absent around the virus. There are certain viruses that contain envelope, but not in this condition. Now coming down to, to the genetic matter, the genetic matter is actually a RNA, single stranded RNA is the genetic matter. So now how the microorganism travels, how the virus travels, transmitted, it is transmitted from one person to another by a orofecal route. That means by use of the drinking contaminated water. Okay. What, what do we mean by contaminated water? The water which is contaminated with the fecal matter. So that is the most common route. So obviously as you as the name indicate orofecal contaminated uh, water. So obviously you can see where the disease can be more prevalent. Obviously this will be more prevalent in the lower socioeconomic groups. The poor hygienic conditions, poor people, overcrowded area. So these are the uh, areas where the disease actually prevails. So now I will discuss about the pathogenesis of the hepatitis A. So now this hepatitis A virus when enters inside the body. So how it is, how it enters, how it is transmitted, transmitted by orofecal route. So once this virus through the oral route goes inside the body, enters into the liver, that is enters in the hepatocyte, the immune system is activated. <clears throat> immune system means this activation of cytotoxic T cells. There is generation of antibodies IgM and IgG. Both of these kind of the immune system, they destroy the hepatocytes. What kind of hepatocytes? The hepatocytes that contain the virus. So, because of the destruction of these hepatocytes, there is a development of symptoms of the hepatitis. But at the same time, because the hepatocytes containing the viruses, they are removed, they are killed. Similarly, the virus will also be eliminated and hence the patient will recover. So no doubt the symptoms will appear, but the same immune system will also help with the recovery of the patient. So this is about the pathogenesis of the hepatitis A virus. So now coming down to, I will discuss the pathogenesis in the written form. So first is the, uh, that there is activation of the immune response. So virus leads to activation of the immune response by generation of cytotoxic T cells, 
production of antibodies and amongst the antibody it is IgM which is first of all produced that is if it is produced within 5 to 10 days of infections that means what is the what is the indication that means if you take out the blood measure the IgM and if IgM is present you should understand that it is a recent infection but there is another antibody IgG which is produced later on after two to six months so that means if you check out the presence of IgG in the blood it indicates it is a past infection not the current infection current infection is indicated by presence of IgM I'm talking about the hepatitis A okay and IgG tells the past infection and this IgG remains in the body for a long period of time throughout the life and provide immunity against the HIV, HAV. So more pathogenesis, so I told there is an activation of the immune response, uh, T cells and uh, generation of antibodies. Now those antibodies, those T cells, they will destroy the hepatocytes. So immune system attacks the hepatocytes containing the virus destruction of hepatocytes that contain the viruses so this because of this destruction injury of the hepatocytes development of clinical symptoms at the same time the virus will be eliminated and it will lead to resolution resolution means healing recovery of the clinical illness so now what are the signs and symptoms of hepatitis A so one important thing is that there is a acute hepatitis no chronic liver disease in this condition incubation period is approximately 28 days so the, what are the general symptoms that will happen so general symptoms that means there is an abrupt onset of anorexia that means person will, will feel not taking any food no desire for the food and that will be abrupt because it is acute in nature there is a feeling of nausea and vomiting malaise feeling of unwellness then there is a fever there is a headache these are the general symptoms I will discuss more symptoms and there is abdominal pain also I am discussing more symptoms so now what are the other symptoms that happens in the uh, generalized symptoms in the acute hepatitis acute hepatitis as I told there is a nausea there is vomiting there is fever also this abdominal pain moreover what are the other things there is jaundice, bilirubin, the levels of bilirubin are increased and it is manifested in the form of jaundice. Then the color of the urine will be changed. Urine will become dark in color and stools, stool will become light in color. So you can say there is a change in the thing. Stools are becoming light and urine is becoming more dark in color. So now we can classify this uh, apart from the general symptoms that I told fever, vomiting, nausea, abdominal pain, anorexia. Uh, we can divide the patients on two types depending on the symptoms. I will discuss how I am dividing. One patient is the acute icteric hepatitis. That means in this condition it is a more severe form of the symptoms. Second is acute and icteric hepatitis the difference is icteric here I am right and an icteric it is mild form what is the meaning of this icteric icteric means jaundice that means in this condition there is a jaundice bilirubin's levels are very high in this condition bilirubin's level are not very high so this is the difference so this is a severe form it is a mild form So coming down to acute icteric hepatitis, there is because it is um, severe in form, there is a massive destruction of hepatocytes, massive increase in bilirubin, development of jaundice and other symptoms like as I told dark urine, light colored stools, itching, pruritus is again an important symptom of this one, acute hepatitis and then marked increase in the serum hepatic transaminases that means uh, from liver uh, if the liver injury take place the enzymes will leak out from the liver into the blood 
so in the blood there is a rise in transaminases so how much rise approximately four times rise in blood okay the liver enzymes the examples of those enzymes one is called as alanine transaminase which is also called as alt and aspartate transaminase which is called as ast so the levels of ast and the levels of alt will increase in the blood it indicates massive liver injury now coming down to the milder form anecteric anecteric because there is absence of typical jaundice there will be jaundice but it will be very mild in nature minimal injury and there is a rise in bilirubin and transaminase but relatively lesser about two times in the previous case it was four times so uh, other points related to hepatitis hepatitis a uh, it is self limiting in nature self limiting mean the disease will cure of itself it even if you don't take the medicine the symptoms will disappear in most of the cases and in very few cases mortality will take place and it is about 0.3% okay in the general population but this mortality rate is relatively high at 2% if the age is 50 or more 2% mean if the 100 persons are infected 2 persons will die and another important point is in hepatitis a there is only a acute phase chronic hepatitis is very rare and the symptoms remain to the liver or to the systemic but no extra hepatic that means no involvement of other organs complications are very rare so now coming down to the another kind of uh, hepatitis that is hepatitis e virus this is caused by hepatitis e virus hepatitis e hepatitis it is non enveloped single stranded rna similar things to the hepatitis a if you remember then it is also similar to hepatitis a in terms of transmission same orofecal route symptoms are also very same um, that means acute symptoms clinical course again acute not chronic but if the there is a pregnancy or immunocompromised persons the viral infection this hepatitis e can produce the complications like in the form of the fulminant that fulminant is very severe massive liver failure so this is what i want to discuss with you about the hepatitis a and hepatitis e in the upcoming video i will discuss hepatitis b and its etiology and its pathogenesis along with the symptoms thank you